Commander. XCOM 2 is landing on PC this February, and if you're wondering how it stacks up against XCOM Enemy Unknown and XCOM Enemy Within, here are the four biggest differences I've experienced while playing the game so far. First, let's talk about psionics and psionic abilities. As you'll recall, in Enemy Unknown, psionics are a bonus set of abilities you can unlock in soldiers who have the psionic gift. Unlocking these abilities tends to happen pretty late in the game, and the powers you earn are stacked on top of your soldier's existing class and skills. My mind is my shield. Now, psionics in XCOM 2 are a whole different beast entirely. Instead of being an additive bonus, they're now a totally new soldier class unto themselves. Unlocking the psychic gifts still requires some research and the construction of a psylab, but both of these things can occur very early into the campaign, much earlier than an enemy unknown. And the results are still just as devastating. Unlike the other classes, a Psy soldier's abilities are pulled from a randomized pool of potential psychic skills. Some of them you'll recognize from the previous games, such as mind control, while others are totally new, like the Null Lance you're seeing here. Next up, let's talk about engineers, who weren't all that special back in Enemy Unknown. The game doled engineers out at a pretty steady pace, and you really just needed them in order to build more satellite uplinks. But in XCOM 2, oh boy, engineers are your livelihood. You need as many as you can get your hands on, and you'll still never have enough. That's because engineers are now individual units that can be assigned to various jobs around the ship, whether it's clearing out junk so you can build new rooms, or increasing the ship's power output. Nearly every room in your base has a slot for an engineer assignment, so when you're starting out in XCOM 2 and you see an engineer mission pop up, take my advice and jump on it fast. New orders, Commander? Third, I want to talk about your typical mission structure in both XCOM games. Enemy Unknown almost always has you wandering through the fog of war, tiptoeing across the battlefield while trying to puzzle out where the enemy is hiding. If you're playing with the Enemy Within expansion, then the allure of Meld encourages you to speed up the hunt, but typically you're playing a slow, cautious game. XCOM 2, on the other hand, does its best to hurry you through most of its missions. In the beginning, you're typically concealed, meaning you can move around the battlefield without alerting the aliens. Red exclamation icons indicate an enemy's range of vision, so as long as you avoid that, you can position your squad for the perfect ambush. At least, that's the ideal scenario. Each mission usually runs on some sort of timer, whether it's because you need to blow up a communications relay before reinforcements arrive, or hack a computer terminal before it triggers a security lockout. So while sneaking around unseen and all is fun, you still have to move fast if you want to complete your objective. We've got the objective in sight. For my final point, let's examine the high-level strategies of these games. In Enemy Unknown, your overarching goal was clear. Build more satellites. Satellites give you coverage, coverage reduces panic, provides funds, and basically ensures you won't lose the game. Everything you do, at least in the beginning, is to help get more satellites into orbit. I'll make sure production begins immediately. Now, as you might have guessed, XCOM 2 isn't so straightforward. Here are the benefits provided by satellites, and I'm talking about funds, additional XCOM staff, and coverage over various parts of the world, are spread out across several different tasks. And these tasks are oftentimes competing with one another. You will run into situations where you can either send your ship to collect supplies from a disabled alien transport, or rescue a scientist who's being held captive. I know you had to make similar choices in Enemy Unknown when choosing between different abduction missions, but here the choice has a lot more weight to it, because you don't have the free influx of supplies and personnel coming from those satellites. Deciding how to prioritize your time in XCOM 2 is one of the game's biggest challenges, especially in the beginning when you're running low on, well, just about everything. And that'll just about do it for XCOM 2, folks. You can check out the show notes below for a link to the full written preview of the game. And if you like what you saw, why not hit that subscribe button and check out some of our other videos.